Hey everybody, it's Bill from MattTracker.com and welcome to this episode of Behind the Mask. Before we get started, I just want to say uh, thank you to everybody who's been watching. Uh, we do have some winners that have been announced. I just want to go over them real quick to make sure everybody knows it. Uh, JT Decker, uh, Lucas, your items have been sent. Steve, um, I sent you another message on YouTube. Get back in touch with me on that. And, uh, uh, Snapper 1984. Hope that's the correct one. Um, I got your information. I'm going to get that computer out to you as soon as possible. And we'll be doing more giveaways very soon on the channel. Um, there'll be more items to go through to spread around the community. And again, thank you to everybody who's been donating. Um, I, it's been overwhelming um, that you care that much about this show and uh, what we're doing here, and I just hope to keep doing it for a really long time. Um, if you want to help support us, go to matttracker.com, and there's a button right right on the home page, right in the middle. Click that. Uh, you can buy something from our store, or you can do a donation. Whichever one's easier for you is easier for me. Um, again, thank you for that. But this episode, I want you to picture something for me. So close your eyes for a second. I promise I won't, I won't do anything weird. All right. So picture yourself back in 1985. You're getting dragged through the store. James Way or an Ames, maybe. Kmart. I don't know if they were around back then. And your parents are like, you know, hey, we need to get you clothing because we want to torture you. You didn't, you didn't care about what your clothing was, just buy it. And out of the corner of your eye, you see this red box in the toy section on the end cap. Now you go running straight toward it. Your mom's asking you questions about your underwear size, and you don't care. You're just going toward it. And lo and behold, you see mask, maybe for the first time. And as you're staring at the box and the artwork on it, you're just amazed. Naturally, your parents come over and tell you it's too expensive. And then you just persist. You know, you're a kid. You have to manipulate the best you can in order to get something, right? So you, you, you cut a deal. Mom, look, we're buying underwear for me. I need to get a toy for myself, too, if we're going to do this. It's really good negotiation. So, they let you get one of the smaller ones. And that's either Piranha or Condor. Now, since this episode's about Brad Turner, it's probably going to be Condor. And most of us would have picked Brad Turner. And that was the general consensus when I've done polling over the years, uh, which was your first vehicle. So, it... I don't know, the, the allure of like the green motorcycle to turn into a helicopter, I guess it was just too good to pass up. And, you know, that was probably the main selling point at first, but you probably didn't even realize you were holding one of the, what was going to be one of the most favorite agents out of the entire line. Now, Brad was voiced by Graham McKenna, who also did the voice of T-Bop, who was covered in a recent agent profile. And Brad is a rock musician. He, he's shown playing different instruments. Uh, I've seen him play, uh, guitar, drums. And if I remember correctly, I also think he was playing saxophone. Not 100% on that. So if anybody wants to correct me on that, please let me know. Um, he's, a he's an expert motorcycle and helicopter pilot, which comes in handy considering that's what his vehicle is and turns into. Uh, he also enjoys uh, rock climbing and is known to have studied Indian folklore. I don't know why. He's known to be solid under pressure and very laid back and a cool person to be around, unlike somebody I know. Brad would appear in only 26 episodes spanning the two seasons, which is kind of low when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, when there's 75 episodes. 
I feel like it was a missed opportunity to have Brad in there more, but you know it. The writers, there was no continuity even with the writers. The writers got a got a lot of say in what they were going to put in these episodes. So I, I don't know why that would be the case, but twenty six episodes. Um, and his first appearance was in the Death Stone. Season 1, Episode 1, and his last episode appearance was in Season 2, Episode 10, Cliffhanger, which was the last episode of the series. He used two masks and two vehicles in the cartoon, Hocus Pocus and Condor, and Eclipse and Razorback. His, all, you know, his toy run as well were the same, and he was too cool to get a vehicle and a release in Series 4 of Split Seconds. He just couldn't do it. Too cool. The Hocus Pocus mask would make appearances in 22 episodes and had the ability to create realistic holograms. It was... It was a pretty cleverly used mask power in the cartoon. It, and in the comics, like, I don't have too many of the comics, but I know it was used well in the comics. And there was a... There's a really good uh, shot in it was either Mask 85 or Mask 86. I have to look back at it, and I'll post it here, of Brad, you know, sending down a you know hologram to trick Venom. I just thought it was a really cool shot. So, um, and I guess you could really say that Illusion was his ultimate weapon. I'm not sure how the tagline for the show carried on through his mask, but I, there are stranger things, I guess, in the show. I don't know. Eclipse only appeared in three episodes, which were in the racing series, and just kind of created like this blob of darkness. You know, you couldn't see really. Uh, and also, don't don't stare directly at an eclipse, like some people. It can cause issues with your eyes, um, whether or not you believe it to happen or not. It, it can. I want to talk about Razorback first, and I've done a review on the toy itself, but I'm going to talk about the, the cartoon aspect of it and the toy a little bit later. Um... It's a stock car that turns to a rescue tank and appeared in three episodes along with the Eclipse mask. It has... It has a metal cutting laser, sand cannons, and a prism missile. And I just always felt that it was a weird transformation. Um, not very imaginative. The mechanics of it are really elaborate, but it was just like, hey, look, I opened up this way, and I don't know, just found it to be odd. And it goes kind of similar for the toy, but I'll get to that in a second. Condor would appear in 20 episodes, and I always felt that Condor's transformation was the most realistically driven one. Like, it, if, if I was going to see something like any of these vehicles transform? Well, I mean, aside from, like, the lame ones of, like, Firecracker just kind of going up a little bit. Um, like, this has, like, the most realistic application. You got a motorcycle, and then it turns into a helicopter. And a helicopter actually has the elements to make it a helicopter. It doesn't really defy the laws of physics, so that's why I kind of thought that. Um... And outside of Billboard Blast being as true to life as you can actually be uh, with just tremendous ingenuity and and outside of Billboard Blast with its pivotal role in everything. As I said, it's a helicopter. That's it. And as I said, it's a motorcycle that turns into a helicopter and has an antimatter beam.
and the toys of the same names. I'll start with Razorback. I reviewed this before, and I'll stand by my review, where I just feel, like I said earlier, it's a weird transformation. The mechanics of it, are they're very elaborate. And to be able to have like it do what it does as a toy, I applaud. In a cartoon, I'm like, uh, what, what's going on here? That's me. But it, I don't know, it's just, it's just an odd, it's just an odd transformation. I, I don't have any other words to describe it, and I wish I did. There's just something about it that doesn't, that doesn't feel right. Maybe it's because it's supposed to be, you know, Brad Turner's vehicle, and he's supposed to be cool. But that makes him lame, I think. I mean, hell, if I had a transforming vehicle, even if it was a, a skateboard that turned into a scooter, I feel like I'd be pretty cool. Patent pending on that, by the way. That's my next mass vehicle um, for Kira Wax to design. Watch out for that one. I'm glad we got more of a Brad Turner presence in the toy line, but unless you're really getting into recollecting the entire toy run, I would skip Razorback and just get the figure. Loose for Razorback, you're going to pay 50 to 80 hundred dollars, give or take, depending on condition and if you have the missiles and the little side mirrors, etc. And in the box, you're going to pay upwards around two hundred dollars, give or take. Now, Condor, I feel, is plastic perfection. Go back to that store earlier and remember when you tore up in that box or when you were in the car ride home. Was it was it love at first sight? It had to be. The transformation is so simple, yet elegant. And I think that makes Condor one of the most iconic toys of the 1980s. And toys that were still collecting today. Like, when I look back there, I know it's simplistic, but I just have so many fond memories of it. And just look at the mechanics of it, and what it does, and how quickly I can transform it. Meanwhile, if I'm trying to transform one of these... Generation 1 Transformers down here, I have to get a freaking PhD in, you know, brain surgery or something. I don't know. Now, Condor, I consider to be plastic perfection. I want you to go back to that toy store we were at earlier in this episode. And remember the car ride home when you tore up in the box in the back seat. It was love at first sight, wasn't it? If you got through the, you know, the box itself and then the in insert... And it probably twist ties and tape. It was still love at first sight. And the simplicity of the transformation of the toy and just how, how elegant it is, I think it makes Condor one of the most iconic toys of the 1980s. When I talk to mass fans, Condor is usually what is talked about to me the most. And Brad Turner. It's not Matt Tracker, it's not Thunderhawk, it's not Miles Mayhem and Switchblade, it's Brad and Condor. So take that kind of into perspective and realize just how iconic it really is. Loose, you can get a Condor, 25 to $50, depending on the condition. And in the box, you can get one for 100 to 150. Um, they do vary. It just depends on, you know, where you're getting it from naturally. So, what are your thoughts on Brad Turner? And what are your thoughts on Condor, Razorback, and the two masks, Hocus Pocus and Eclipse? Did you have a preference? Um, was there anything you would have liked to have seen different with Brad Turner in the cartoon and the toy line? Did you want him in split seconds? to ruin his cool demeanor. To be fair, back in 2001, when I started recollecting, I didn't know that the split seconds line existed. So, I didn't miss anything. So, I don't really want to have that tainted with Brad in there 
well, I don't want Brad to be tainted by in that be put in that series. So let me know your thoughts. I always appreciate the feedback. So remember, please like, comment, and subscribe to help keep Mask alive. And until next time, this is Bill from MattTracker.com, and I'll talk to you later.